Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We try to keep it tasteful each and every week, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Delmarva, deer hunters have been at it for weeks in Delaware. Now Maryland sportsmen have their chance with a rifle. See how they're tuning up before heading out. Then, not the Thanksgiving dish you were expecting. We're serving up 4x4s on rocks. And right along in Chopper 16, we'll get a view of one of the most beautiful areas on all of Delmarva. And you might be surprised by who owns it. Plus, we'll draw a winner for our latest giveaway, this deluxe set of waterfowl hunting calls. And we've got plenty of new viewer photos. Right now on Outdoors Delmarva. Hi everybody, thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker, we're happy you could join us. Well Willie, we're here in the cabin again this week, sitting in our chairs and a couple things come to mind immediately. First of all, man, am I full from the <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner the other night. How was your holiday? It was sumptuous. That's one way to sum it up. <laughs> you know, a lot of the folks watching out there right now are relieved, especially those uh, Maryland deer hunters, because yeah, for some of them, it's finally time to pick up that rifle. You know me, I kind of like the classics. I've uh, got this old 30-30 I've had for years. I think I've shown you this before. Yeah, that old Winchester is a real classic deer rifle. Sure is. Now, whatever you shoot, this weekend is the first weekend of the Maryland rifle season, and we want to wish all you hunters out there a lot of luck. And you know, Mike, accuracy is not a matter of luck. No. We spent some time at a local rifle range watching some sportsmen as they prepared. All right, all right, the hole. Right, the hole. There was a storm rolling in a few evenings ago when we caught up with Curran Gas of Mardella Springs. He and his buddy Michael Fisher had the shooting range to themselves at nearby Delmarva Sporting Place. You got to put your time in. There's a lot of time to it. We. Um, we spent a lot of time getting our deer stands ready, getting our hunting lodge all, all together and ready. Uh, and there's a lot of time and in, in getting your rifle and, and all sighted in. Low and to the right. You're low. You don't right. just go out there and, and start firing away. And even with daylight fading fast, these two Maryland deer hunters were right. still hard at work. Hard and hold. Shooting a few rounds into the 100 and 200 yard target. Because I don't want to take a bad shot and uh, happen to injure an animal or anything like that. Rather just put it right on the money and, and uh, do the best I can do. We are right here at 100 yards are the two 7 millimeter shots. Knees down here. To there, 30 on six. By now, these two Wicomico County sportsmen have already joined thousands of others in search of a buck or doe. And a few hours on the range will make sure that if they find themselves in position for that crucial shot, they're confident to take an ethical squeeze of the trigger. I'm more of a more of a meat hunter, so I'm gonna let these guys take take all the all their trophy bucks. You know, I'll go get a try to go get a doe, a nice doe or two to uh, to eat through the winter. And, um, and that's about it. Good luck out there, hunters. And you won't want to miss our Deer Hunters special. Next week at this time, we'll have some opening week rifle action, as well as a look back at some of the other seasons, special features, and viewer photos from the past few months. We hope you'll tune in. Mike, over to you. Thank you, Willie. Well, with all the leftovers in the fridge right now, we've all probably got a little bit of turkey on the brain for sure. But I'll warn you, you can't be chicken when it comes to hanging out with the folks in this next story. This 4x4 club sure loves tearing up the dirt, but they're also working to preserve the land. The world of extreme motorsports is set to a rhythm all its own. It's just a, it's a bug. When you get bit by it, you love it, you know? And for members of the Eastern Shore Jeep Association, taking the wheel of a big, bad 4x4 isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. 
But having a club like this amidst the flat terrain of the Delmarva landscape comes with its obvious challenges. Similar clubs in more mountainous parts of the country have it easy, you could say, where rolling hills, slopes, and boulders are found around every corner of nature. But this group hardly has trouble creating and overcoming obstacles. To learn how to drive uh, in certain situations, um, you, get, you get to the point where your vehicle probably can make it, but if you're not a good driver, you're not going to make it. So it's a hand-in-hand -hand situation where you want to build your vehicle to your capabilities um, and then be able to test those capabilities. We call this obstacle wet spot. On their home tract of land in Sussex County, this Jeep crowd is making the most of their wooded trails. And while they live to tear up mud holes and navigate tricky log jams... My major concern on this one was actually to put some guards on this one. Yeah, I figured a guard, especially that's, right here. Their main course of mayhem comes with a side serving of conservation. We have another bridge just up the way a little. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on that one. Um, so currently we're on route. We get out here and we try to maintain the land as much as we can, um, keeping it clean for everyone um, and just keeping it a safe environment for our vehicles. And the club also puts its numbers to work in the community, adopting highways, supporting families in need, and even using their Jeeps to transport local hospital staff during nasty weather. My first vehicle was a truck, but pretty much my second or third vehicle I had a, I had a Jeep and uh, totaled it, so then I needed a new one. And I've just been, I'm up to, I think, five Jeeps now. So next time you hear the roaring engines of the Eastern Shore Jeep Association, listen closely. Beneath the symphony of horsepower being unleashed, this band of Bigfoots is drumming up its own destiny, cutting out a vital place in the community and preserving the future of this extreme playground. No doubt about it, you're going to get dirty. To learn more about the Eastern Shore Jeep Association, just go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com. Still to come on Outdoors Delmarva, stick around for our latest product giveaway. We'll draw a winner for these deluxe waterfowl calls. And next, Captain Willie's back with a whole new view of the Y River. But first, did you know? The modern day Jeep evolved from a military vehicle of the same name. In what year was the first version of the military Jeep mass produced? The answer, when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know the first version of the military Jeep was mass produced in 1941, just in time for the start of World War II? If there was such a thing as being too pretty, that Y River country in Talbot and Queen Anne's counties would be guilty as sin. The high, flat, fertile land surrounded by navigable waterways that place the world at your doorstep attracted European settlers like moths to a flame. The land was bought or patented early by wealthy planters for the growing of tobacco. Edward Lloyd, one of the earliest settlers, named this tidal network of streams the Wye River after the River Wye in Wales. 
His family home was the Y Plantation near the mouth of the river, and from those days until now, this section of Delmarva is known for the mansions and estates of the well-to-do. What you might not know is that a big parcel of this amazing place belongs to you. Y Island in the middle of the river contains nearly 3,000 acres, and about 2,500 acres belong to the Y Island Natural Resources Management Area. Access to the island is by bridge on the north side. And from there, signs direct you to the various public use areas. There are over 12 miles of trails to explore the different habitats. The schoolhouse trail winds through one of the few stands of old growth forest left on Delmarva. Each season brings a totally new experience. On the west side, the Ferry Landing Trail is lined with Osage orange trees brought here from Texas and Oklahoma, and it connects with another trail at the beach at Drum Point. Don't miss the 250-year-old holly tree. Overlooking Granary Creek, the DNR Conference Lodge, called the Duck House, can accommodate gatherings of 25 to 30 and has overnight lodging for 12, by reservation, of course. Now, there are no boat launching facilities on the island, but 30 miles of coastline provide endless opportunities for wildlife watching. Closely managed hunting for deer and upland game and waterfowl is allowed by lottery and reservation, and camping is restricted to youth groups and educational organizations. Why Island is a great example of the Chesapeake Bay country that people from all over the world come to see. It's there to enjoy and to take care of because it belongs to you. Back to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Willie. And while you were hanging out up there in Y River country, I was down here a little bit further south in Wicomico County, where at least for one weekend, the land was going to the dogs. It was windier than anyone could have wanted when members of the Maryland Retriever Club ah! took to the fields around Powellville in Wicomico County. The event, a big amateur competition along the way for even bigger events to come. Both dog and handler had to bring their A game. The event that you've been filming is what they call a blind, running a blind. And what that means is that somewhere out in the field or in the water, there is a bird way back. But judges will uh, score the dog on the least amount of whistles. Over! Yeah, I'm seeing if, if the dog, I'm making little notes to see if the dog follows the hand instructions and what the dog does, how it reacts. Most retrievers find their stride between four and five years of age and campaign for points and rankings throughout the year. And while many of the dogs taking part in these simulated hunting situations are real hunters as well, Actual hunting is far more relaxed and doesn't require as much discipline as when facing the trial judges. And as we get closer to winter here, we're going to be bringing you even more retriever trial action as several high profile events find a home here on Delmarva. Still ahead on Outdoors Delmarva, we'll pick a winner for our latest product giveaway. Will it be you? We'll be right back. Late fall and winter ushers in a unique time here on Delmarva. As an escape from the cold climates to the north, a lot of geese choose our area as a wintering spot. Years ago, Scorchy Taws gave us a closer look at some of our part-time neighbors. They came to us in the early days of autumn, and at sundown tomorrow with hunting season ending, Delmarva's migrant squadrons of Canada geese will settle down to rest from the rigors of evading man off and on since October the 23rd of last year. They will stay with us as cold weather continues. Then when winter starts fading into spring and the days lengthen, the multitudes become restless. How have we learned so much about the migratory habits of Canada's? By banding. Banding has unlocked most of the migratory secrets of this popular bird and trapping by cannon net the most popular method of capture. Wildlife biologists spend several months baiting an area and the geese soon become less wary and look forward 
forward with eager anticipation to each morning meal of golden kernels of corn. Then comes that fateful morning when the cannon that is fired over the bait line, and scores of birds are strapped beneath it unharmed. Wildlife officials gather up the birds in sacks, which reduces stress, and they are checked for sex and age before the metal identifying band is clamped on the leg. Then it's back to freedom and the soon to come long journey home for the primary business at hand. The raising of a family and the perpetuation of their species whose first haunting cries of next autumn's migration will once again turn men's eyes toward the northern sky with looks of awe. Scorch it all is wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Well, it is that time of year for waterfowlers and with that in mind, time now to Pick a winner for our latest product giveaway, Willie. Before we do, let's take one last look at what's up for grabs. This set of two GOE game calls will get you started when it's time to hunt either ducks or geese this late fall and winter. These 100% American-made calls are machined to perfection to produce realistic sounds that the birds can't resist. This combination of GOE game calls retails for $200. Okay, Mike, let's go. All right, here we go. Mix them up. Man, we got more postcards than ever. Huh? Drum's getting full. Getting full in here on Big D. Nice spinning, Willie. All right, I'm gonna pick the winner here for these Goey game calls. And look at this, we have a nice postcard that says Bethany Town Cats on it. And it is from William Johnston from Ocean View, Delaware. Congratulations, William, you won the game calls. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Del Marva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Del Marva, care of WBOC TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Still ahead, we'll share some photos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. But first, did you know? The Y Plantation in Talbot County was where Frederick Douglass spent his childhood as a slave. Did You Know is brought to you by Taws Marine Insurance. Hi everybody and thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, and I'm excited right now to be spending some time with one of the sponsors of our program, talking about Diamond State Pole Buildings. And I'm here outside one of their most recent constructions, a beautiful garage facility here in Dover, Delaware. Great looking building, and joining me right now is Dave Mason with Diamond State Pole Buildings. How you doing, Dave? Doing great, Mike. It's great to be here. Diamond State Pole Buildings is just a local company uh, based right here in the middle of the peninsula, and we just take pride doing, uh, doing our best to meet our customers' needs with, uh, with pole buildings. Wow, look at all the space in here. This is my type of garage. You got the boat over here. Uh, somebody's been doing some hunting, a little duck decoy. And you can fit a ton of stuff in a place like this. Absolutely, it's always exciting to see you know, how much stuff you know, goes into a building and what people use it for. Uh, this particular building, as you said, boats, lawn mowers, power tools, but yeah. other folks will use it for churches, hobby shops, uh, mini storage, you name it. They can be used for a lot of different functions. And this is just the downstairs, the garage area. I understand this place has a loft too. Absolutely, a rather large loft. Let's go take a look. Okay. Well, a nice sturdy staircase leading up here. Absolutely, this is just a gorgeous loft. Wow. Of, of course, this room here is uh, engineered. Uh, it's designed by a local truss manufacturer, and it just provides for a lot of great space. I've had apartments smaller than this. Absolutely. I think there's about a thousand square feet up here, and it's not only large, but it is sturdy. Again, these are all engineered rooms to support that kind of use. And I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking man cave. I love these sliding windows. Really adds a nice custom touch. Pretty easy to customize a pole building, Dave. Absolutely. Uh, basically, if you can dream it, Diamond State Pole Building can build it. All right, Dave Mason, thank you for showing us around. Had a blast, and thank you for sponsoring Outdoors Del Marva. Absolutely. Better materials, better prices, better buildings. Diamond State Pole Buildings for all your building needs. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Your viewer photos are still to come. Outdoors Del Marva viewer photos are brought to you by Branchy's Gun Shop. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina and Diamond State Pole Buildings.
Welcome back to Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker. Well, you know, Thanksgiving's behind us, hard to believe, but definitely getting into the swing of the holiday season. And we want to take a minute to remind you of a pretty great gift idea. You know, for months we've been featuring the photography of Kevin Fleming here on the show, so we're happy to tell you about his new book, Wild Delmarva. Willie, I know you've been paging through that baby. Now, what I like about this book, Mike, is these aren't just portraits of wildlife. You can tell by the expressions on their faces that they're in the middle of something important. And don't forget, photographer Kevin Fleming's new book, Wild Delmarva, is now on sale. To order your copy, go to wilddelmarva.com. And remember, one dollar from each purchase will be donated to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And stay tuned to our show because we're going to be giving away a couple of copies of Kevin's book over the next few weeks, just in time for Christmas. Good deal. And now it's time to share some of the photos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Alan Sklar of Ocean City is an avid surf fisherman and says the big blues have been showing up in the surf quite a bit. Excellent picture, Alan. Keep up the good work. Here's a picture of eight-year-old Ty Miller from Pittsville. Ty says he shot his first ever buck on Maryland Youth Day a few weeks ago, and thanks to his mom, Kelly, for sending in this great shot. Luther Carter was fishing aboard Captain Bruce Wooten's boat out of Crisfield last week when he caught a couple of nice rockfish. Captain Wooten says even at 85 years young, Luther still knows how to catch them. Dave Truitt of Millsboro shot this big racked buck on the first morning of the Delaware shotgun season. And uh, by the amount of space that deer takes up on that trailer, I'd say Dave should have a healthy supply of venison this winter. And Charlotte Sampson of West Ocean City writes a note along with this next picture of some beautiful autumn leaves. She says on a fine November afternoon, it's the kind of color you'd never expect to see in the parking lot of the Ocean City Fishing Center. Well, we love sharing your outdoor photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. You can upload them directly to OutdoorsDelmarva.com using Flickr or just email me at mparker at WBOC.com. Well, Willie, that is just about all the time we have for this week. That's right, Mike. And remember, you won't want to miss our Deer Hunter special next week at this time. We'll have some opening week rifle action, as well as a look back at some of the other seasons, special features, and viewer photos from the past few months. We hope you'll tune in. Well, we're definitely looking forward to that big show next week. Until then, for Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes, reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Marva.